Okay, Don, in a lot of our videos, we talk about insulin. I'm not very clear how insulin kind of affects my body. So how does repeatedly spiking my insulin slow down my metabolism? Yeah. Well, you know, what people think about insulin is that that's the stuff that diabetics, you know, use and give themselves in order to balance their blood sugars. Well, we have really lost touch with what insulin, that hormone, really does because it's not just about removing the sugar out of your blood. What insulin does is it delivers proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to the cells. So what it ends up, when you think about metabolic hormones, your main metabolic supply hormone, meaning what gives life to the cell, what gives energy to the cell, what gives the food to the cell, that's the transporter molecule is insulin, okay? Now, when we think about sugar in the bloodstream, what is diabetes? What is, what is this condition, this terrible condition that causes people to go blind and you know their, their, um, their fingers and toes go numb and they get neuropathies and retinopathies and all these terrible things? Diabetes, right? Well, what is diabetes? Diabetes is elevated blood sugars. So if you just think that what your body just hates, the state it hates to be in more than anything, is in a state where your blood, sh where sugar is elevated in your blood. So when the body senses, or when, when you eat a big dose of sugar, let's say you, were, you just drank, a, guzzled down a Coke, <laughs> now you got a big mess of sugar in your bloodstream, all right? When it hits your bloodstream like that, it's an all out panic in your brain because your brain and insulin are constantly monitoring one another. Why is that? Because your brain needs to know what insulin is doing because insulin is supplying the life-giving molecules to every cell in your body, right? So if insulin is having trouble doing that, your brain wants to know that because that means its survival is being threatened, okay? When a large amount of sugar, because here's one of the hardest things for people to understand is human beings are not designed, not designed in any way to have large amounts of sugar enter their bloodstream. We, we from a evolutionary perspective or any other perspective, we should not have large amounts of sugar entering all at one time. But it happens all the time these days because people eat these excessive, massive amounts of refined sugars and refined starches. That hits your bloodstream, your brain senses this huge amount of sugar, it sends a response to your pancreas to secrete insulin, and of course if it's a panic situation on one end, it's a panic situation on the other. So way too much insulin gets secreted. All right, now, you ask about spiking insulin. That's what I mean by a spike. It means it's trying to compensate for this panic situation because what does the body hate more than anything? Elevated blood sugars, right? So we think diabetes is this terrible disease. And what people aren't understanding is you're literally, by eating all this terrible sugar and fructose and starches, you're creating many diabetic states three, four, five times a day, every time you eat that bad stuff. So if you can imagine, you know how, how uh, bad the consequences are of diabetes, but if you just think about what's happening to our population now, all the heart disease, all the, you know, the, the lipid problems and the things that are always associated with diabetes, it's happening to people, even though they might not have the disease diabetes, but they're still creating many diabetic states all day long, you see? So when insulin just gets secreted in this high amount. Your brain now senses, oh my goodness, I've got this high level of insulin. So then insulin is gonna start removing this sugar. As it removes the sugar, there's no possible way that it's going to be able to remove it to the exact degree because what, when you eat fast absorbing sugar, it comes in really fast and then it stops. And your body can't modulate that correctly. So what you end up doing is you start, you then remove too much sugar out of the bloodstream, okay? When that happens, now you've got this counter panic situation because now guess what the brain is thinking? Okay, now you just removed my primary source that I need to think and run the brain. So now it's going, you had one panic situation where you, you had, you're creating this life-threatening circumstance and now by removing too much sugar, now your brain panics again. So now what it has to do, because what I talk about a lot is insulin, and then I talk about adrenaline and cortisol as the big hormones, right? So insulin is the one that gives, adrenaline and cortisol are the ones that take. They pull the energy out of your, your uh, cells, 
in order for you to think, be, and do. But listen to what just happened. You had too much sugar in your blood, you had a rapid spike in insulin, you had a removal of now too much sugar. So how's your body going to get the sugar back into? It's got to use adrenaline and cortisol, spike that now, in order to go into the reserves and put sugar back into the blood. So what did you just do? You created two brain-stimulating panic situations that are threats to your survival. When you do that to yourself over and over again, you're just literally just tearing your metabolism apart. And this is why we have people who can go from all of a sudden, they can be seemingly doing just fine. And then what happens is they start gaining weight. Women in particular, they reach a certain age or something happens, they have some kind of event, and then all of a sudden the weight starts coming. And people don't understand, how does eating sugar cause weight gain? Well, let's go back and listen to what is it that insulin does. It's a storage hormone, remember that, right? So your brain now has this, throughout evolution, has had this way in which to help you to survive during feast and famine. Right? During feast time, what insulin does is it puts away as much of the energy as it possibly can in your body's fat stores. During famine, you have to use that fat stores because you're not eating. So see, we are biologically designed to be able to do that. So when you flood yourself with all this sugar and all this energy, two things happen. One of them is really bad and really diabolical. And this is another thing that people have trouble understanding, which is called hormone resistance. Or in this case, it's called insulin resistance. When we spike a hormone, what, what, what does that mean? You have way more of it than you should, right? So you're, it, it's a compensation. So when you have more of a hormone in your body than you should have, guess what happens? The cells eventually have to protect themselves because these hormones are so powerful. So if you can imagine that you have liver cells and muscle cells, and that's where your body takes this stored sugar, it's called glycogen, right? You've heard that term before. Puts it in muscle and liver cells so that you are able to uh, call on that reserve when you need it. All right? Now just think, all those muscle cells and all those liver cells are constantly getting bombarded by insulin going, knocking on the cell wall going, I need to put sugar in, I need to put sugar in. And then pretty soon the cell gets so full of sugar that there's no more room for it. So what develops is something called insulin resistance, meaning the cells have now become resistant to the insulin's effect. And the only way insulin can actually open the door of a cell is on the cell, on the membrane, is something called a receptor. I don't want to get too technical, but just think it's like a lock and key. So insulin comes in, plugs into this receptor site on the cell, opens it up and shuttles the sugar or, and the proteins and the, and the fats and some vitamins and minerals and things like that into the cell. That's how it works. However, when insulin resistance develops, the cell is going, look, insulin is toxic. It's too much. I can't handle it anymore. So the cell literally takes those little lock and keys and pulls them in. You have less of the receptors on the cell. So insulin can't, no matter how much it knocks on the door, it can't get in. Now, Guess what insulin resistance is? Insulin resistance is another term for type 2 diabetes. What, what, what do we have right now as an epidemic, not only in adults, but in children? It's type 2 diabetes. You know that adult onset diabetes is what it used to be called, and now because so many kids are getting it, we changed the name to type 2 diabetes? So, so we can include children? What's going on? This is where I keep telling, um, or, or saying over and over, the insane amounts of refined sugars and refined carbohydrates are the things that are spiking insulin, creating this toxicity, this insulin toxicity is what it is. The cells go resistant and now you can't put the stored glucose, sugar, in the cells anymore. Here's the kicker. How does someone get fat then? As these cells get too full, what does your body hate? elevated sugar levels, right? Now imagine, if you eat a bunch of sugar, insulin wants to put it in the cells, now the cells are saying, no, I don't have any room for it. Where's that sugar going? Staying in this, yeah. what's that called? Diabetes, right? Type, that's what type two diabetes is. It's not the same as type one. Everyone thinks they're similar. They have nothing to do with one another. Type one diabetes means that your pancreas cannot produce enough insulin. Type 2 diabetes means you have over-secreted insulin for so long and it's now so toxic to your cells that they won't let any sugar in. What a horrible thing that is. But here's how you get overweight as a result of it. When 
your body cannot remove the sugar via insulin because it doesn't have any place to put it, that sugar in the bloodstream has to be dealt with. Why? Because that's what it's so irritating to the to the inner lining of your arteries and veins and stuff, and it's so problematic because that's what diabetes is again, right? If you don't get that out, you've got huge problems. So what your body will do is it converts it into what's called a triglyceride or a fat, and it sends it right to storage. Do you see? You can, can you imagine? If there are people out there. In fact, let me tell you just a very quick story. I have an uncle who died on the operating table. This was about 20 years ago when they used to do fat removal operations. He died on the operating table having about 400 pounds of fat removed from his body. All right, so that's a problem. Now, I know these people because these are relatives. I know what they eat. They're not sitting around eating uh, chicken breast and broccoli, trust me. It's just bread and rice and sugar and it's just amazing. And they get huge. His, his brother's son, who they call Little Jimmy, Little Jimmy was just removed from a second story window in his house with a fire department and this huge crane at 740 pounds and he was one of those people that laid in a bed and couldn't move. This is what's happening to people or potentially can happen when you have such insulin resistance and you continue to eat so much sugar and your body just keeps converting it into fat. Can't do that with proteins. It can't do that with fats. People think if you eat fat, you get fat. That's 100% wrong. What happens, you, you do turn it into fat, but the, 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 um, the, the crazy part of all this fat phobia that we have is that what people don't really understand is all this carbohydrate and sugar you're eating is what's creating the fat. That's the, where the fat is produced, from the sugar. You see, so insulin gets spiked removes too much sugar, that removal creates a, a response from ad adrenaline and cortisol, and now the two things that I talk about and the two things that I know are causing all of this, this disease process, just by eating sugar, we've now just ripped, it, ripped into our supply side and demand side of our metabolism. We've set up a situation where the insulin becomes toxic to the cells because we've done it too many times for too long a period of time, which is, by the way, a disease that we can now produce in eight-year-olds because of the amount of sugar that they're eating and consuming. How terrible is that, right? So, and then now we've created this, this setup in the brain and with insulin because it's a storage hormone, right? That's what it does. The brain, the communication between insulin and the brain, when we overconsume this carbohydrate and become insulin resistant, is nothing but one-way storage. All it can do is to get that sugar out of the blood, is to store it as fat. So what happens? People just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can gain weight really quickly, and, and, and all that has to happen is you reach that threshold where it, you start to get insulin resistant. And all these women that are going, how did I gain this weight all of a sudden? I just started getting into premenopause or menopause and all this weight started coming on. No, no, what happened was you reached a point where you started to become more insulin resistant. And then when you start losing your female reproductive hormones, that accelerates that process. So okay. all of a sudden, you can gain the weight. It all sort of makes sense now, doesn't it? it? Does.